In this video, we're going to look at the changes we needed to make to the body shell of our A40 for it to fulfil its role as a race car, with the potential to lead the field. Most of these mods were done before painting, when we did the basic restoration. But to show their value, we look at them along with some of the special parts fitted into the completed car. A race car must be as strong and stiff as possible, and at the same time be as light as possible. To a great extent, these are conflicting requirements. The starting point for strength is a solid body shell, and in a motor car as old as our A40, this has meant replacing any area that's been subject to rust or poor repair in the past. Stiffness was added by either extra spot welds or more usually applying MIG weld along all the main structural seams. This is known as seam welding. In some areas, extra stiffening pieces are added, or stronger mounting points, like these plates that will carry the anti-roll bar. As we've just added a load of weight, and there'll be more when we put the roll cage in, we have to look for places to remove some weight. For example, doors are always a favourite for shedding some metal, as they're substantially not structural parts of the shell. Bonnet and boot lid normally have considerable strengthening frameworks, most of which we removed. In fact, all that remains of the boot is the skin, which, like the bonnet, is held in place with the usual bonnet pin. Some of the component parts, like brakes and seats, will also be in for slimming treatment, but we'll consider them when we look more closely at those areas of the build. The boot floor normally has a depression for the spare wheel to sit in. As we don't carry a spare for racing, we've decided that the floor can be made flatter to leave more space underneath for a larger fuel tank. The fuel delivery system is housed in the boot area, so we needed to make some changes to incorporate a fuel and fireproof panel that will isolate this area from the inside of the car. Inside the car, we're welding in strong rails so that the driver's seat can be solidly screwed down to the floor for both safety and to give the driver that close contact feel with the car. And because the driver will be sitting a bit further back and lower, we're moving the dashboard back three inches to bring all the switches within easy reach. Under the bonnet, the battery tray is removed, saving weight and improving access to the engine and oil system. The new racing battery is very much smaller and lighter than the original lead-acid battery. It sits alongside the catch tank in a tray, fashioned where the redundant heater used to be. The last major consideration for the shell is the fitting of a full roll cage. We bought a T45 tube set from Custom Cages to build and weld in ourselves. T45 tube is stronger and lighter than the more often used CDS tube. When the cage arrived, we quickly came to the conclusion that we didn't have the necessary skills to assemble it in the car, or the best equipment to make the specialist TIG welds, which are recommended for T45 tubing. Fortunately, we made contact with Richard Townsend, who, when not building race shock absorbers, is designing and building cages into British touring car championship race cars. To get the cage certified, Richard completed a sample weld that was sent off to custom cages together with photographs of the installation. When the complete body shell was returned from painting, we set about building the suspension. That will be the subject for our next video.